Okay, let me take you back to a dark time. Um, this is about last year, I don't know, maybe a little more than that, when these stopped being sold. Like they were done. Like holy fuck, I bought five pair because I can't not have ship 9500s around. So I'll have a couple of those new. Um, but I'll link to these in the description because they're back. But during that dark time when these were gone, when the under $100 open back quality fucking sound of that was missing i had a little bit of a, of a sinking feeling and i panic bought a bunch of things and some of the things i panic bought were these grados now the sr60 and the sr80 are i think 80 and 100 dollars i actually should have memorized the price before i started but we're not that i'm not that guy so yeah we have 80 and 100 bucks so they're roughly the same price all right there's the 60s and the 80s. Well, Zeos aren't the 80s just better than the 60s because the number's higher and they're more money. Well, we're gonna talk about the differences, but we're also gonna talk about Grado in general because I've bitched about a couple Grados in the middle of PS500s. Um, they were those 325s. I don't think I reviewed them, but I heard them and they were garbage. And then these are the ones from my wall. There. These are the GS1000s. And they cost $1,000 when they were new, and then I got them used for like 500, and I put them on my wall, and they got an attached cable, and we'll talk about those. But what we're gonna really talk about is how fucking good these both are. Because even though I got them over a year ago, and they've been sitting and fucking flopping around in piles, because oh, I'll get to them, oh, the ships are back, I don't have to deal with those. I really should have brought these up, because they're not just like some mediocre pair of headphones that doesn't quite qualify. These are both very good, and they're very different. Like, I'm sitting here, matched 789s, low gain, same volume, and then I brought these out because I need any excuse to pull these off the wall because I hate attack fucking vacuum cords. And I plugged them into the tube amp because I had them in the Aoun, and I'm like, you know what? I feel like these are special enough. They just need a tube. Just, let's just tube them, so I did. Um, a lot of people think Grado is the devil because they're from Brooklyn and they never change anything. And like this $80 pair of headphones has the same exact headband as this $1,000 pair of headphones. Actually, the top stitching is different, but that could just be a year's thing. They might have just changed their process at this point. But um, so Satania, obviously, needs to be Satan. We're here with Satan. I actually managed to get sound demos of these two. And I'm really proud of the way they came out. Well, I think I got, I did a combination sound demo with like five tracks. So in the description, or wait till tomorrow and you'll get the sound demo. And the sound demo did something that I didn't, well, I tried to get this around my, my rig and it was like it kept collapsing because the spring band on top. We should look at the build. Um, you know, I was complaining about this thousand dollar pair of headphones with an attached cable. Yeah, well, Grado just makes everything with an attached fucking cable. So get used to it. Uh, it actually isn't a terrible cable. I, I do, I like how it says Grado on the end. They've made their own tips for a while now. It's a solid cable. If you're gonna attach a cable, make it not shit. Who am I thinking about? Oh, the Sennheiser 630s were pretty fucking garbage. But this is a, this is a decent cable. It's thick, but it, 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 it feels quality and it goes to this split, which says GL on it. Which I'm not sure what that stands for. Grado Labs, Grado Limited. I don't know. But then it goes. Then right after the split, it sort of gets like weird because you see that weird twist. That's because the way these are built is the same way they've been built since day fucking one. There's a piece of spring steel wrapped in pleather, or that feels like real leather. So they actually upgraded to real leather. But the fucking system here is just a piece of plastic like squeezed together, probably a hole in there, and then this stick you could slide up and down. And then there's like this rubber cap that they put on this metal stick so you can't pull it off. And what that means is these things will spin infinitely around and around and around and fuck the wires up. I've seen some pairs of Grados where this wire is just so twisted because every time the person picks it up, they pick it up and then put it down and then like pick it up and then they put it down and then they're like, pick it up and all of a sudden it's like what the fuck is happening with your headphones and no one seems to care so I yell at them big R big L because the drivers are identical there's 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 a lot going on in a Grado that 
makes you go, wait, those are new? Because they are definitely from a bygone era. But they work. And you buy Grados, you buy them actually for the sound. And that's not a joke this time. PS500s, I complained nothing. They're fucking too expensive. They didn't change anything. Blah, 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 blah. The only two places Great Oak succeeds is very cheap and very expensive. Even though that's the same exact fucking headband and stick design. Stick, stupid. There's a sound that these can make and there's a sound that these can make that are very hard to quantify in any other headphone. And part of that is the weird ass design. So you got a plastic cup with a cat hair stuck to it because cat. And then you get pads that are straight foam, like Guardians of the Galaxy, why are you wearing these 80, like port pro Yaxi pad foam. Actually, does port pro does Yaxi make pads for this? Because if they did, I'd fucking buy them. And you look here, and here's your driver, glued in place, so you can't get it out unless you dissolve the glue. Actually, you can see a little bit of the glue on the outside, or maybe it just pops in, in this particular one. So you got this big hole that goes straight to the driver, there's no padding, there's no nothing. It says SR60E, which is the E revision. You get this much angular variation in the, the thing, like that's it. That's what you get. But then it obviously spins the thing. And it doesn't weigh much because there's not much material here. And a lot of people, the first thing you'll complain about is, well, it's they're fucking on here. Even these, which are blatantly much bigger, I still count as on ear because there's no depth to the pad. It's just on your ear. The fact that it's a weirder shape and bigger doesn't mean it touches you any less. So that that's that's the entire build process that's why they could make these in brooklyn and sell them for under a hundred dollars you got to cut lots of corners lots i if they went oh we made them in china now and look they're all made out of aluminum i wouldn't buy grado anymore i wouldn't recommend it anymore they have i'm from new york i'm a new yorker anything you can get made in new york i'm going to be fucking biased towards which is weird because i shit on a lot of grado stuff but um cheap 80 bucks 100 bucks What's the, uh, the one thing I did do when I was doing the sound demo, I started that story about an hour ago, is I stretched this headband. I stretched it out a lot to put it around the block so that these could face the microphones. And by doing that, by making them rest at like that position, they are so much more fucking comfortable now. Because I had a friend, or I still have a friend, who had a Grado RS1s, which are like a $400 set, and he swore by them. And I'm like, but what about the pads? And they're like, oh yeah, they break in after a couple of months of use. Fuck you, all right? I shouldn't have to wait months for something to get comfortable. That's, it's, that's fucked. That's super fucked, don't do that to me. But these, once you stretch that headband out and get rid of the, the, the pressure on it, then it's just a super lightweight touch. The foam doesn't bother me as much. And what the foam does, better than almost any other open headphone, is instead of, because even, like, look at my wall, What pick an open headphone, any open headphone. They still have a pad, and even like vegan pads, there's a foam, and there's a circle, and then air gets trapped in there, and changing pads matters. But with this, this is just, it's air conditioning foam. It's, it's almost visible through it. So the driver just sort of floats against your ear on this. It doesn't actually seal anything in, which does two things. Makes, when you listen to light and airy music, yes, it's fucking light. The reason I bought those, the reason I spent $500 on a used pair of these is because like anything acoustic, anything guitars, anything female vocals just in a space, you're just in that space with them. These pads do nothing to capture or tune the sound. And that's every other headphone. The pads are a big part. If you change pads, it'll change the way the bass works. Or, and these don't do shit. They actually remove the bass. And they remove the bass effect from the pads. All you get is a slight variation in distance from the driver. And then you get this chamber behind it. So let's put this back on for a sec. Brooklyn, shut up. Opening suite to Halo. 
Here you go. Perfect. Sherlock Holmes OST. The movie. With Iron Man. Not, not in blood, but in bond. It's just like... That, that sound, that like, just violin in an alleyway is a violin. I'm going to put on these because, um, shh, I don't get to take these out often enough. And I want to hear that. Want to hear something weird? That sounds better on the 60s than those. Now, I know I'm tubing it, and that should make a whole big difference, but... No. All right, so here's a bit, here's a deal. I don't think anyone's buying those used. You're buying these two, or one of these two. You have to make a decision. The 80s are legit 25% warmer than neutral, and these are 10% more treble and highs and vocal clarity than neutral. That's your choice. That's the difference between these two headphones. Because a lot of people will say, a lot of people will probably prefer the 80s because they actually have some sort of low end where, you know, like I was saying, you've got a giant open space. How do you make bass? And the way you do that is you tune the driver insanely towards bass, which is what these do. But I was noticing on things like this, like something where it's really fine treble, I want the 60s. And if you've got like any sort of music with any sort of low end, you want the 80s. And by the way, in case you never saw my review of these, low end on these will actually distort them. Like if I put on a dead mouse track and I try to listen on those $1,000 headphones, they break up. You literally can't. The drivers are not, the drivers are too delicate for that shit. And I still have them on my wall, even if they're flawed. And that is a fucking flaw because what they do right, be, it's okay. I just, I just know not to play bassy music on them. I have a ton of headphones. I don't have to concern myself. If I only had one headphone, it couldn't be this. But if you want low end to reproduce at all in a Grado, SR80s are probably it. I haven't heard the RS1s that my friend had. It's dick. Never. Haven't you dick? But um, the 60s, however, I keep switching back and forth here listening before I start this review. And I'm like, damn, that I put these on. I'm like, oh, it's missing the warmth and bass. And then I go back to this and I go, damn. I think the highs in these are better than the ships. And then I think the mid-range bass on these probably matches what you can get out of the ships. It's, it's a harder call because as open as these are, these are even more open. Like, I don't even know how to describe how open they, they're open. They just don't exist. I do have a question, though. I'm going to answer my question now because since these are easily moddable, I think this will fit. Yeah, it will. So I haven't done this, and I was just wondering before I started the review if they would. So I'm going to give this a shot. By the way, same system, only metal circle. And also very glued in driver, which is why they're still um, wired because I'd have to unglue a vintage driver and that ain't gonna fucking happen. Oh, and you can buy these pads. I will find you a link to these pads in case this sounds great because I mean, they're still on here, but we're, we're gonna <laughs> quieter for shit sure. Gotta come down a little bit. Ooh. Too loud, too loud. Ooh. The problem is these are built further out and I'm hitting there and it can't physically, like, they're that open and the top is pushed in. So I'd have to severely bend this out and then bend that back in like I'm currently doing. 
So let's see if I do that. See, cheap grados are fun because you get, look, I've modified them now. And I'm probably going to have to push them way down. Get their sticks down. Well, now they fit perfectly. I may have just built a monster. Let's try the 80s. Fuck it. Fuck it, these are cheap enough. Uh, they'll probably end up in a yard sale, both of these sets. But for now, uh, let's see if I bring them to Rocky Mountain, what that looks like. I'm recommending these. In case you haven't figured it out, Zeus, Zeus just plays on camera. That's all I've ever done. I just want to play with headphones and listen to music and find new and exciting ways for people to enjoy music. Hopefully without destroying their wallets. I keep doing that. So that's see. Because that added, I think, a touch of bass. Oh my god, they're so light. The bigger pads make them lighter. I don't understand. Hold on. Because these, these definitely lack a little touch of treble. Like they just, they don't have the treble that these do. But now adding these giant pads pushes them just a little bit further away from my ears. Well, I gotta find a, I gotta find a good test song. Oh, here you go. All right, here's the deal. I'm recommending both of these. It doesn't matter which ones you get. They both have astonishing qualities. Like. Fuck. I can't believe I've let these sit here for a year and not tell you about them. I'm a bad person. Oh. I might like these better than those in most cases. I have to have the complete. I have to complete it. Ugh. We're going to go full close range SR60 pads. Definitely a bigger thing. They, they stay, but they're definitely designed for that. This is uh, Pirates of the Caribbean 4, Angelica, featuring Rodrigo and Gabriel. Oh man, I, f I feel like such an audiophile with this. Like, look. All right, I'm probably recommending the 60s over the 80s, even though it's stock pads, probably a lot more people are gonna be like, oh, I like the low end, a little bit more of that. It's like 8% more low end with the 80s. But you lose that treble, and I don't know if I can personally live with the loss of treble for the warmth. And now with the pad change, you gain a little bit more warmth. It's, it, I think it's a denser foam, because these are replacement pads that are not Grado official. Oh, these feel fucking weird now. Because the, the cups are legit heavier because they're wood. Oh, now they just sound muddy. Wow, they actually just sound... muddy and close. Wait. Ooh, I don't like these at all without pads. And I'm on solid state, too. Kizo Monogatari, track 27. Oh, yeah. The, these these might be better than those with these pads. I am don't know why. Like the treble is just fucking... All right, I'm bringing these to Rocky Mountain. Bringing SR60s with replacement GS1000 pads. Like looking like this. Doesn't that just, uh, it feeds the soul when Zeos can make shit like this happen. No Beatles. Static X, shit in a bag. A little harsh. A little harsh. It's a little harsh. They were a little harsh with shit in a bag. I'm just playing now. You can stop this review and just check out the sound demo. I mean, the sound demo, take that and now add immense comfort. I think I bent the headband better on the 60. See, that's perfect. If you have, if you are a thrash metal person and you have a lot of treble just beaten, get the 80s. 
Because it, it takes away the treble enough that it doesn't bother me. The treble bothered me on this song, on those. Again, we're going with these pads. Padswap.com. Oh, Ex Machina, Night of the Rottweiler 4. This is a new retro wave thing. That's, I, fuck. This should be as exciting a review as any other review I've done. People love it when Zeos loves something cheap because you could actually try it without, you know, selling your kidneys or homeless people's kidneys. Did you know that you could abduct people and cut their vital organs out and sell them? You did not know that. Don't do that. Satania, stop convincing me to tell people that. Um, you gotta just make the decision. If you're not buying both, I would recommend, honestly, you buy both and just fucking try them. And if whichever one you prefer, you take the other one and you gift it to someone who has shitty headphones. It would cost you 180 bucks. That's cheaper than most headphones. And then get a set of these pads, which I think were like $30, which seems like a lot. I will find every revision of large style Grado pad and you could try them. There's yellow ones, there's these, there's original Grados, which have, this is more like a straight slope. The original Grados have like a, 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 like a cup shape to try to be a cup, but they're still on your ear. Um, so links to these, they're on Amazon. Links to pads, and maybe somewhere down there, ship 9500s, because I don't want to really, those exist, and yeah, they're great. But if you can live with the lot with the wire and you want to try something that truly feels audio filey, and by that I mean some things just don't work on them. That's what audio files have. They have setups that don't work. They're not Swiss Army knives. You have to specifically say, well, this pair of headphones is very specifically for things that don't have much treble, but the detail is pulled out. And, like you could, I can make that fucking bullshit argument with any with either one of these and that one. Although I don't recommend using those pads on it. That's shit. I might get other pads for these now. Because these pads were like the cheap replacement and maybe I'll get something more expensive because the pad change to this makes them sound horrible. They need to have the open hole. So yeah, that's another thing we're changing. It's no longer has like a quarter inch of foam in front of it, but you're adding distance because your, your ear isn't as close. I can't sell these to you enough. They're fucking worth it. Either go for the 80s and a little bit more mid bass, or go for the the detail in the treble in the 60s, which still has enough bass, but it's not like it's not going to satisfy you with Dead Mouse. And this will, but you're going to lose a little bit of the treble. That's that's what you get. That's what you get. Download Satania. Check out the Patreon. Everyone on the Patreon gets to see this early. If these don't exist on Amazon by the time this video comes live to the to the masses, all my patrons bought them. I have over a thousand patrons. And if they see me like something like I like these, they'll probably buy it all. So that's a shit reason to join the Patreon, but eh, that's how it works. You also get to ask me any questions you want. And when I decide on which one of these pairs I'm keeping or not keeping, the other one will go in the yard sale. And the yard sales happen from the 1st to the 10th of every month. This next upcoming yard sale in August will be one of the final yard sale that's actually being used to fund Rocky Mountain. I'm going to Rocky Mountain. I've rented a room. The room costs $13,500. I've already paid that. The GoFundMe is at $8,800. So I haven't even paid for the room yet. But if you'd like to chip in, the yard sales will have items specifically donated to the channel, like these Odyssey MX4s. This is a nearly $4,000 pair of headphones. Someone just said, here, sell these in the yard sale, use the money to go to RMAF. I will do that. I will also be selling one of these, but probably after Rocky Mountain. I mean, I'm not starving to death, but fuck, it's gonna cost probably 25,000 by the time I'm done. So watch these videos early, participate in the yard sales, ask me any questions you want. If you wanna ask me questions directly, you wanna be in the chat on my phone, they're $10 a month because those people help me more than I help them, honestly. So you probably get all your answers from those crazy bastards. And then Rocky Mountain GoFundMe's in the description and the Hi-Fi Guides post probably one for each of these. They're different enough, I shouldn't have done them both in the same video, but I would just be referencing back and forth if I did. So the point is get everything done, bring those out for fun, do this, and then realize the full potential of the world and then just quit reviewing headphones. I think we're done here. Okay, we're done, I'll see you tomorrow. Check the sound demo. All right, static X shit in a bag on tubes. 
fixed it. So SR60s on tubes fixes the treble. And then you put these pads. So that's it. End of the video now. Now I'm done experimenting. I'm sure of it. I'm, I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it.